Coming to you live from downtown Detroit, this is Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep with your host, Joel Conan. This is a volatile puppy here, isn't it? And Dennis Dick. I've been a penny. I will buy the stock for a penny. With everything you need to start your trading day. Good morning, traders. How we doing? Welcome, Benzinga Nation. Let's get this party started. Let's bring on the best guys in the morning to watch, Joel Conan and Dennis Dick. How you guys doing? Uh, doing great this morning, Mitch. How are you on this uh, on this fun Friday here? Getting some hey. nice weather in Michigan. What uh, what are we going to talk to talk about today, Mitch? we got a super jam-packed show, guys. We're going to get into some top earnings. We're going to talk about the AMC squeeze and offering completed. Elon, of course, rising up the doge again. Kathy selling Baba. Fisker with the partnership. And, of course, we'll, we'll talk about growth stocks all throughout the show. But definitely, definitely, we got a jam-packed show. we got a guest at 825. Marcus Highcutter with Rockwell Trading. Hit the like, guys. Let's go ahead. Hit the share button below. Let everybody know this is the best pre-market prep show out there right now. So hit the share. Let everybody know that if you're not watching, you definitely need to tune in. All right. So let's get into what we saw today in the market. Joel, take us in. What, what's, what's going on out there? Up, up and away. Strong day yesterday. Uh, nice close. Uh, just higher open and then made a low just below that close of 07, 05 and a quarter. Folks, we got back half of that move uh, from 42, 38 and a quarter down to 20, 29, 50. Boom. We're right back halfway at 41, 34. So, who cares about inflation? Who cares about that CPI number? We're right back where we were before that even came out. Uh, the pipeline's back online. They paid the ransom, but crude's still up. Uh, 77 cents is 64.59. Uh, gold still doing the 18, 18, 50 thing up 1120 at 1836.20. Silver's in the green too by 31.6 cents at 27.37. And uh, Bitcoin, that, that was a break yesterday, but Musk knocks it down. He brings it back up, up $2,040 and $50,405. Folks, with Bitcoin, we just want to keep all these lows here. 53K, that's your number. That's the key to the upside. Uh, Triple D, a tale of two wow. tapes yesterday. I mean, man, growth. Uh, maybe yeah. one stock, Peloton. But growth just can't catch a break. They want stocks that make money, companies yeah. that make money now. Yeah. Yeah, we want money now. This market wants money now. That's why the Kathy names are hated. It makes sense when you think about it. If we're going into an inflationary environment, a dollar today is worth more than a dollar tomorrow. So you have all these companies, oh, they're going to make a lot of money f three, four, five years from now. Yeah, but those if we're going into an inflationary environment, those dollars that they're going to make in the future are going to be worth less than those dollars are today. This market wants money now. They want companies that make money now. This market wants value. Um, I've tried a couple of times yesterday on the show. I was like, I think growth is starting to, you know, try here. I like some of the growth names. Kathy's, you know, didn't make a new low on the move. What's it do? It turns around and makes a new low on the move. So every time you think, ah, maybe we can try some growth names, it doesn't work. You know, I bought some Unity software in the long-term account, immediately down with it. You know, you sell a value name, you look good for a day, and then you regret it the next day. So it's so tough. But I will say... Overall, I'm not moving from my high cash portion here because I think still that this market has a lot of issues going forward. If inflation becomes a concern, if you know we lose the bubble in commodities, which have been holding us up, I do think SPY eventually could roll over. So it's been a nice rally the last couple of days. If you're overweighted equities, I think you use this rally to sell into strength. Well, I'll give you some background on Unity. They actually got an upgrade today with Goldman Sachs to a buy with a price rating of 126. So that, that's that's a pretty up there. Goldman like Sachs that. stepping in here. That's good. I like that. Thanks, GS. Um, I'm still down <laughs> in my position, though. I bought it at 87. So I paid up too much, apparently, even though it was $165 back in January. Been getting head, head, hit. 
And obviously the earnings report wasn't was okay. It was okay. And that day it went up to 91. It pulled back in. I was trying to buy it near it went to 92. I bought the pullback 87. It's holding the lows. This is a small, these are still small, not not necessarily speculative play. But these are growth names that can still get hammered here. That's why I only took a half size position. It's 83 and a half. I bought it purely because Michael Pactor thinks um, you know, that it's you know it's a good buy. So I bought it off Michael Pactor. Like I said, he hasn't led me astray. A lot of times when I bought my Activision Blizzard off of Michael Pactor, he was on our show two years ago, it was 50 bucks. And he said within two years the stock is gonna double. It went, it went down to 40, and I was down in that position for six months. Eventually, and obviously COVID helped it a lot. Eventually, Activision did double. So, you know, he wasn't right on Netflix. Obviously, he stayed bear for <laughs> yep, a long time. Gotta, yep. But he's been right about a lot of stuff. He does his homework way more than I know the tech stocks. I know the trading. I don't know the fun- fundamentals like he does. So I took his opinion. I'm running with it. But, you know, Unity Software GS is jumping on the bandwagon here now. If growth turns around, it's going to go up. But it's moving with the Kathy names. If Kathy keeps getting hit, Unity is going to keep getting hit. They're all tracking together you look at all our top holdings they are all kathy stocks the algos have grouped them together they're the high growth names that don't make any money but or will make money in the future a lot of them but those dollars like i said today are worth a lot more than those future dollars in those kathy names uh not a lot of re- i mean we're trading up here uh not a lot of volume but uh for our traders investors and in unity software dennis included yeah you, know, you got a double close area 8424. That was your close on Wednesday. 54 on Tuesday. You haven't hit that. I'm not calling it like a major resistance point because you got a lot of room on the upside. But that double close area, just look at that. It's another buck from here. It'd be nice to see it, you know, get above, maybe close in the 85 handle today. If things get uh, really going to the upside, uh, yesterday's high, 87.42. And uh, I think with the Goldman upgrade here, any kind of decline is going to be met with bids ahead of that closing price of 80.91. Yeah, definitely. Um, Yesterday, uh, Kathy sold out of that BABA position. Looks like, well, I mean, she took a lot of it off right before the earnings. She sold some BABA. She's been doing this, though, Mitch. She's been selling the big mega caps to buy the small high growth name. She believes that the disruptive technology is going to eventually turn it around. And she may be right. You know, it's hard, you know, people, when I give Kathy and I've been dissing her for a long time, but like I said, I kind of went neutral on her a couple of days ago. Cause I just think her stocks are all oversold. I guess I shouldn't have went neutral. I should have kept dissing because the stock, her, her company obviously making new lows yesterday in a tape that everything went up. Everything was up yesterday, except the Kathy stocks. So yeah. she's absolutely hated right now. Her stocks are absolutely hated right now. They're a high valuation. I mean, it, it was extreme. Baba is too. Baba is too. Baba's valuation is fine. That's why she's probably selling it. She's only buying high value stuff. She likes the high multiple stuff, the stuff that's going to be disruptive. So she's been selling the good stuff to buy more of those high growth names continuously here and she keeps buying the same ones i didn't look at what else she bought and sold yesterday but you can guess it's the same stocks every day she's buying skl zebra like it's going out of style you know what it is going out of style <laughs> so 14 dollars and 22 cents i mean the stock has just been straight down she buys that open door technologies she buys you know, it's the same stocks all the time the stocks that were all red yesterday the only stocks that were red you know yeah. you tell everything was rallying yesterday it was an everything rally except kathy Seriously, it was everything except Kathy. So yesterday, when I'm saying I think the Kathy names could eventually start getting some love, absolutely wrong, absolutely wrong. Yesterday, I should have stayed off that bandwagon, I guess. But you've got to have you know your portfolio approach to it. You've got to have a little bit of growth, a little bit of value. I felt like my value names went up. Whatever you growth I had left, it went down. You're it, well, it, with it, it feels great to have be all value when the when the market's buying value stocks. It feels great to be all growth when the market's buying growth stocks. But when you get these market turns, people back in January, they didn't want Cisco and IBM. They didn't want any of these old, you know, they didn't want any anything to do with any value stocks back to November, December of last year. They didn't want any of those stocks. But you know what? You will, really wish you had a few of those in there now. So that's why I believe the barbell approach where you got a little bit of value, a little bit of growth, growth is a yep. better way to build a long-term portfolio. If you, know you don't want to do her? any of that, you just index it. It's fine. Yeah, and yeah, which has been working Trading, been working fine. 
Trading and investing are two completely different animals. Like I said, I feel like I'm a great trader. I haven't had a losing month in 20 years of my trading account. My best months are when the market goes down. That is completely different than my investing account. My investing account goes up and down with the market. But it's kind of, I have so many stocks in there, the barbell approach. If spies down 1%, my portfolio is usually down about 1%. If spies up 1%, my portfolio is usually up about 1% because I'm so diversified. So I'm not trying in my long-term investment portfolio to beat the market. Some people just have one account. And if you just have one account, you've got to do different things. But I have a full-time job, literally 50 hours plus a week. Yes, I work more hours because I work the pre-market and the after hours, trading over 50 hours a week. My full-time job is to produce income from trading. I can't sit here and manage an investment account. You can have, you know, an, a full-time investment account managing, you know, if, if your investment account's big enough, obviously that that can be a full-time job too. So that's why I index more, but I also like to do the swings. I like to do field trades and I like to do some other things. Right now I've been saying the swing longs have not been working really for anything in the last few weeks. It's been really difficult for the swing long. Shorts have been working fantastically. I mean, like the Sonos, I tweeted out when it was up 20%. I'm like, well, how long before it gives all this back? It was trading 37 and a half that, 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 uh, on, on the report. It went all the way down yesterday to 3170. It literally went all the way back down. It did rally towards the end of the day and got some of those losses back. But any type of tech stock on a rip is being met with sellers because there's so much overhead supply. There's so many people who are overweight tech and growth that they just continue to sell the rallies. It was the same thing with Fubo. Fubo was up like $22. Oh, man. Came back to back. 18 two days later. What's working right now is shorting the rips on tech. It continues to work. I'm sorry, the evil shorts are winning, guys. They are winning. Uh, and you know, and yeah. I'm one of the evil shorts, and it's a it's a joke. Shorts are not evil, they create price efficiency. You know, this whole narrative that shorts are ruining the markets. They're the ones that stop the bubbles from happening in the first yeah. place. If you have more shorts, you wouldn't have these ridiculous bubbles, and you wouldn't have people getting, you know killed when the bubbles burst i mean all these penny stocks remember sundial or whatever the hell it was sundial growers it goes from a dollar to three dollars to four dollars everybody's like this is the best well it's the best if you sold if you didn't you're looking back and saying i bought that at two dollars at 69 cents i mean eventually price goes to where it wants to be so the sands Bye, out. The sands out. Looks like you perfectly timed that rant. I ran the the sands of time here. I have a little hourglass here. Look at you, Mitch. You're all over everything. And, and look, so perfectly timed. Perfectly timed rant there, guys. <laughs> Five minutes. I loved it. I loved it. <laughs> Call it sand dial. <laughs> the sand dial. The sand dial. That's I love funny. it. I love it. Uh, but and Bob definitely, was definitely. interesting here because I mean, we taught that that low of the move was just a target, right? When uh, the Jack Ma stuff came out to eleven twenty three, and that that's your level that you have to regain. You know, regain. I know you're trading at uh, ten oh five here, up two thirty seven. Mm -hmm. But man, got to get rid of this line now. New low of the move. Uh, Maybe I don't know if she's going to change her style, but maybe maybe stop revealing what you're doing to the street. I mean, it, you know, I mean, it could I mean, I know these stocks are going down for other reasons and stuff, but the street is a street, man. I, I quit telling them what I'm doing all the time. You know, I don't know if it would affect the, the you know, these stocks are not going to turn around and go back up. But I just I don't know. I mean, why, you know, why to tell the bully on the block what you're doing is what uh, would be my well, advice. Well, you know why? Like, I honestly suspect that you know, because when she was disclosing it before, she'd buy it the stock at pop 20%. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, you she know. was getting she was getting rewarded for, you know, disclosing her positions. And now they don't pop at all. They get zero pop. She buys something. There is no love whatsoever for it. None. I think. I think what's interesting is that she's actually been selling Baba, but taking bigger positions than JD and PDD. She's so she's 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 doing a Paris thing there mm -hmm. happening, saying JD and PDD are eating Baba's lunch. Yep. You know, and, and JD has been firing on all cylinders. Let's be honest here. JD before the, the last two months was doing very well. You know, this company um, had turned it completely around. It was a stock that, you know, before COVID was going nowhere for basically five years. I mean, look at the long-term chart of JD, 20 to 40, 20 to 40, 20 to 40 for five years. And then COVID came around, they started shipping packages, they started, you know, whatever else, you know, that obviously and benefiting from COVID directly. 
and it goes from 40 to 108. Now it's back at 67. So you know what? The, the dip on JD, I think she's early. But again, you know what Sean Udall pointed out very well on her show is that she's buying so many times that she just keeps buying on the dip because she's small position. She's buying small. You know, where we come in and we average in and we buy once or twice, she might buy, like Sean said, 200 times. So, you know, she if the company eventually starts to turn around, that dollar cost averaging into her position is going to eventually work out. I challenge some of the positions she's picking. JD, I don't mind, though. I don't mind buying JD on dips. I'm not buying it at $68 here until it stops. At least it give me a double bottom, give me a reason to start coming in here. The stock just broke down, made new lows again yesterday, despite everything else going up. Again, Kathy's loved stocks are the ones that the market is beating up. But, you know, is JD a bad buy at 67 I don't think so. I think if it got back down to 40 I would tell you I'd back up the truck. At 68 maybe, you know, you're still a little bit. But, I mean, it was $110. This company is still in a lot better shape than it was, you know, three or four years ago. So... Sarepta is another one, Dennis. Sarepta is another one. After the big gap down. Remember that? Uh, Is she buying that? She did, yeah. I don't know if she stopped, but yeah. That day that it, I mean, I don't know if she sold, you know, it had the big gap down day. I don't know if she sold this pop or whatever. I don't know either. That thing continues to leak. Look at that. 71 bucks. Make it, I mean, you could say there's three monthly lows in the same area, but it's breaching those as we speak. Wow. That's a I, tough I have Sarepta. I bought it on the initial dip. It went up from, you know, 82. I bought it 82 or 83 bucks, went to 100. I felt like a genius, and now I've held on too long. I will tell you, when you are buying biotech stocks that don't have, you know, it's the smaller companies on disappointing results or, you know, if they miss a trial or if something it's happens like that, to they typically yeah. don't come back very quickly. And sometimes always, they never come back. I always those are hard, hard Tiva, dips to buy. Tiva, that, that was one of those that I used Which to one? believe Which in. Which one? Which one? T-E-V-A. Never Teva? came back. Oh, Teva? Yeah, Teva. That never came back. Never came back. Well, Teva's had problems More with Eric. Yeah. They've had a lot of long-term look, issues. But yeah, Teva was $70. Chart. Never came back. <laughs> Never came back. All right. Let's talk some earnings here. Let's get into some sure. earnings. So we have a couple of them that reported. Definitely, definitely a lot of them on the radar. Let's talk the mouse bigger. first. Let's talk the mouse first. Disney shares slipped more than 3% after the company reported second quarter revenue miss. The media reported uh, revenues of $15.61 billion, which was short of the $15.87 billion expected. Now, of course, the company uh, reported something that I was looking after was, was the lower than expected subscriber account for its streaming service this is really where i think everyone's going to watch for but one of the things that i stated last night on money mitch is you know the parks are reopening so maybe this goes and helps them out on the next quarter but what do you guys think i like disney the parks are reopening the disney plus eventually disney will be if we get past covid disney is going to be the ultimate reopening trade it really will be people are going to take their kids i think we've all been cooped up Half the kids weren't even in school for a while. I mean, Ontario, we're still, we extended the lockdown to like June 2nd. You're so kidding. We literally, right? yeah, there's no school. Everybody can't do anything in Ontario. So I just think that when we do get past this, you know, me and Raz were talking about it, you know, two, three, four months ago, there eventually is going to be a wicked reopening trade. And now Disney has sold off substantially because the, the Disney Plus numbers weren't that good. Let's put it all in perspective. Disney Plus is a small piece of this company. I like mm-hmm. Disney back at 150 before COVID started. Then COVID happened and we didn't know what was going to go on. They had to cut the dividend. Obviously, a lot of issues. They will eventually reinstate the dividend. That's going to be a driver. Disney Plus is still firing and the parks are going to be a driver. I think if you're buying the dip at 170 on Disney, I think you're happy a year from now. I don't know if it's going to eventually go down to 160. I have no position in it yet, but I want to have a position in Disney. This is one that I actually would buy the dip on, but maybe it'll wait the dust settled. The market environment, is not the environment right now, though. I and mean, you say, what are you talking about? SPY was ripping. But this was kind of a dead cat bounce after a really couple of bad days. What up, so- Dennis? I mean, look at this thing now. I mean, I, I know you're saying this, but it's went from 79.07 over $200. Mm. All right. Mm-hmm. I mean, you think some of this uh, has already been factored into the stock? I mean, based, I mean, that, I mean, no. Disney hasn't moved like this in years. I mean, yeah. Yeah, no, because one, we if we're getting past COVID, I've said it before, you've got to eliminate 
the March lows. You've got to eliminate yeah. it all together. You take 2020, market is pricing 2020 as a one-time event. We know on earning stocks that when you have a one-time event, they don't even care about it. This market eventually, if we do get past COVID, if we're past COVID, and it looks like we're moving towards that, they will see 2020 as a one-time event. So where was Disney prior to 2020? It was $140. Now it has Disney Plus firing on all cylinders. The park's eventually going to reopen with a wicked reopening rally because everybody's going to go to Disney World. And I think you're going to see Lizard eventually. Beach is where I'm going. There's, yeah, with, where you're going because you don't have kids. The one place I want to go is I want to take my kids places. If you have young kids, you're going to take them to Disney World. So I think <laughs> 160 is the ultimate buy. I don't think you're going to get there. If it does, I'd back up the truck. But as long as we don't have, you know, and what's scary is, you know, the Yankees story where they're all vaccinated and the whole dang team Shrugged still it got off. it. Shrugged it off. Mark no, do you know the off. Yankee story? Have you, yeah, eight people uh, tested positive. They had the vaccine. They all had the vaccine. That's yeah. scary. Mm. That puts That's a curveball, pun fully intended, for the COVID reopening rally. If people who are vaccinated start getting sick in numbers and groups like that, that's a major issue for everybody. So Dennis, you didn't just, see the new guidelines, Disney. though. You don't need to. You don't need to wear a mask anymore, man. If you're vaccinated, I'm hoping that that's just a one-time thing. That maybe whatever, but I don't know why all those people got you know that had vaccine got COVID anyways. Hey, all how together sick, like how that. sick are they though, Dennis? Daniel? That's a question sick? too. Yeah, how sick are they? I don't know. I don't know, yeah. but those those are athletes that are in pretty good shape too. So, right. anyways, I, I, I'm I'm not talking even about. I'm just saying that's the risk. You know, when you're reading an earnings report, there's always you know risk factors. That's a mm -hmm. major risk factor. COVID is still a risk factor for Disney. If we get past COVID, you're going to be happy about Disney at 170, in my opinion. 160, I I'm backing up the truck. I might buy some today. I will probably buy a lot more if it gets down to 160. I might wait because we're in a market environment that I feel like the market's going to roll back over and it might give you a better shot at a better price. But I think 170 on Disney is okay because I think it's going to be firing all cylinders. I think if we're looking at it at 140 before COVID started and it's 170 today with the way Disney Plus is and the way this reopening trade may come here, I think you'll be happy with Disney. I like Number I like of the Dennis. day for this, I know Dennis, you give it a 170, nice round number. Uh, two things that, that I noticed in this, uh, and that is in the uh, pre-market when we were down quite a bit yesterday, this hit 169 and then got a wicked bounce actually over 180. And then after hours, they pounded it again to 169 and then they got a pop. Now you're leaking towards it. So I just can't get that number. If you're trading this today and it, you know, and you're trying it from the long side, or you want to wait to try it long side, see if that buyer's there, still there at 169. Uh, just obvious that uh, they haven't got enough stock F at that level uh, on the dailies. We haven't been below 170 in a long time, so we'll see what happens. 169 on the upside, on a rip, on a rip, maybe 172 and a half minor resistance. All right, guys, let's see if we can get another earnings here before we get Marcus on here. Let's go into Coinbase. I'm seeing it mentioned in the chat, Coinbase first. Sure. Then we can touch Airbnb and maybe DoorDash a little bit later. Coinbase shares actually slid a little bit there. Even after the company said its net income skyrocketed in the first quarter, the company's net profit for the quarter was over $771 million compared to $177 million in the fourth quarter of 2020. Monthly transaction users more than double doubled here so definitely it had some good growth numbers but as you can see the revenue is there too but it's it just not showing up there on the price there i think this one's going to take a little while what do you guys think i think that uh you had a great number uh with that old time low that old time low 50 51 got there close yesterday and then when they hit it in the pre mar or in the after hours it got right down it actually breached it and it got down to 248 let's call it uh, but I'm still looking at this 275, 276 area. That's the battleground. That's halfway of this move. If this stock really wants to go up, get back over 300, you're going to form a base, hold support 275. All One right, thing all right. to consider is this was hit on the initial report pretty hard under 250. It's oversold. The stock is oversold. It's been straight down since you know it came out here. You know, over 400 dollars. You know, traded that day. 
So it's been hit really hard. It's oversold. It's due for a bounce. It bounced right where it should have in the pre-market at the 250 level, which is critical. So it's good. That's good news. Don't kid yourself. Elon Musk comments on Dogecoin oh, last yep. night turned everything in crypto around. We were in the gutter, and then you saw Dogecoin having a huge rally. You saw a lot of other stocks taking off. Mara and Riot were basically down. They started getting lifted as soon as those comments came out from Musk on Dogecoin. Can you just tell those comments, Mitch, just uh, because if people you know, weren't paying attention last night or weren't on their Twitter account, Elon Musk tweeted out that he's working with Dogecoin about you know something. What, what did he say? Yeah, yeah. So I, I actually got the tweet here. I'm pulling yeah. it up here for you guys. Sure. Um, so the tweet was, he, and he, this is what he tweeted out exactly, working with Doge devs to improve the system transaction efficiency, potentially promising. Uh, that last <laughs> little part, that last little part, I'll say is a little forward looking there, but um, definitely, definitely. And one of the things that came out right after that was Portnoy actually commented on this surge and said that Elon Musk is the best market manipulator in the history of Earth. I guess that's a compliment. Right, I think that is. I think <laughs> Portnoy is a little jealous there. N not the not the shout out at Portnoy a little bit. I think he's a little jealous there of Elon's uh, influence. I don't know, man. I, oh, I man. will tell you, I agree with that. Not maybe the best one on earth, but they're the market manipulation. Who's better? But Who's one, better? Well, I will tell you why he's not. Good. I don't think he's <laughs> selling into it. So he does the pumps, but I don't think he does the dumps. He's not sitting there no, pumping no. and dumping. People think, oh, he's sitting there and making all this money. Elon yeah. Musk is one of the is, is he the he richest person in the world? Care. Is he the richest person in the world? Second, I think. He's yeah. doing this all for fun. It's so fun. He's it's pumping. Fun. He's not doing the dumping. You know, so you're gonna have a hard case against somebody saying, you know, oh, they're a market manipulator exactly. when they're pumping, but they're actually not selling any stock. They're giving their opinions. His opinion is more influential. So I will say Musk is the one of the most influential people out there right now. But he's not selling. Jim Cramer is hugely influential. But you know what? He can do it because he's not selling stock into it. He's not even he's not buying and selling. He's not talking up his stocks on a regular basis. Maybe Musk is talking up his Dogecoin, but he's not turning around and selling it to you. And he's not making any money off of this. Like it's, it's a fractions of you know pennies, you know, compared to his net worth. So he's doing all this for fun. He thinks, honestly, I think this is what he thinks, you know, and I'm trying to get into Musk's head, which is a very difficult <laughs> thing luck, to do. Good luck, man. Good luck. Think, he thinks it would just be funny if we started transacting in Doge and Doggy Coin. He <laughs> thinks it would be funny if people actually started transacting funny, in Doggy huh? Coin. And that's why he's working it and with it, because he thinks it would be funny. It's fun for him. This is a Yo, fun thing for him. It's like, a, you know, think about how much stress this I guy agree. has to be under. What the, All the things that he does. This dog coin thing, a sorry, live thing, is a stress reliever for him. It's kind of fun. That's what I think Musk is doing here. He's not, you know, oh, I'm going to buy a whole bunch of doggy coin. I'm going to make all this money on it. He's not. He, he doesn't, doesn't even care. care. He could care he less. He doesn't care about making money. He cares about trying to have some fun. He's a weird guy. He said he's a weird guy. And he's having fun with this doggy coin thing. The one problem with it all, though, is he's so influential. There's a lot of people who aren't having fun with it. There's people who are in Bitcoin, and it gets hammered because he says all of a sudden, you know, he's not going to buy, you know, take Bitcoin for Tesla payments. And then, you know, people are maybe off the crypto bandwagon. He's on Saturday Night Live. He kind of calls, you know, Saturday Night Live. What did he say, Mitch, on Saturday Night Live? He called it something, which really got it hammered. He called it like, <laughs> um, I forget what they said. Um, Anyways, I, hey, I mean, it, it's like it's always been, you know. I, I, I love how he compared himself to that Wario. That Wario is, it, it, it's that character, you know. He, he, he has fun with it, you know. And, and I think what everyone needs to remember is, like you saying, at the end of the day, I don't think he's worried about the money here because no, at the end of the day, absolutely not. I mean, he could look in his bank account. I don't think there's any worries there. But there's no worries. It, it's, it's more fun. It's more fun. And the question is. Though, is that fun to others? It's not. Is it hurting others? Yeah, you know? that's what and some people that chat say. I mean, what I would say with this call is it a if, hustle. That if you really hustle. believe in this and this this <laughs> wave, and you know you you have X Thanks, amount in your portfolio, you know, open up the whatever account, Binance or whatever, put X amount and say, okay, yep, this uh, X amount is going to be twenty X. Or it's going to be zero, or it's going to be fifty x, or it's going to be zero. I mean, and then and then you're not caught up in like the emotion. Do we get some retail sales there, Mitch? Real quick, we're following. Yes, we're we just, just about to hit. Let's we do just some retail. 
Let's do Let's some do retail it. sales and talk stocks because this is not the Elon Musk doggy coin show. This is a stock show. Of course, of course, guys. So right here, retail guys, sales. What do you looks got? Looks like for we you? got sales, sales gaining here. I'm I'm trying to pull it up here right now. Let's get okay. this rolling here. Uh, S and P's are just little dip there. Oh, Nothing sorry, major. Okay. Off the pre market high. I thought the retail sales would be super strong, right? Because people coming out of the house. I, do not have it up on my TV Mitch here. Is grabbing it for us. What's he grabbing? Yeah, no big grab deal. We're, we're dipping a little. The only thing is just overall, uh, I'll just talk a general number in the S&P, and Dennis was talking about how he thought this was a gift. We got half of those losses back from the Friday high, and the bad, jump, bad jobs number, we decided to take this market to new all-time high. Yesterday morning, they took it down to 40 29.50. Halfway back is 41.33.75. So that's a number I'm going to be watching for today. If the market holds there, closes there, and I'll say, hey, we're strong. We got back half. We're going back to test 4,200. If, and I thought this way too early yesterday, I just thought that the comeback was a little bit, you know, too much, too fast. But uh, backed off, leaking a little bit here. Uh, still very green on the session. That's silence. Uh, you know what I'm doing. Did we doing. lose Mitch? We lost Mitch. Well, I'm, I'm just silent to, because I got nah. trades going on. I'm trying to work out. <laughs> stuff, but. Yeah, it looks like we're a little bit late on the numbers here. I'm trying to, trying to okay. pull up the numbers no here. We'll get it up in a second. Oh, but yeah, Cedar definitely. Point is opening for the season today, uh, Dennis. So if you could come across the border, you could go to Cedar Point. That's opening today. Reservations required. Cedar Point. Cedar Point mass. has got the best role. And when I we used to go on roller coasters, I get motion sickness now. But as a there kid, we go. that's the you best place, it. man. All right. So we got uh, core retail sales up here for April at 0.8% versus a 0.7% ex expected here. The prior was 84 there. So a, a little bit better than expected, uh, about 0.1% of a percent better there so let's see how it reacts but as we see and we can go to maybe a a chart here a one minute chart let's see how we're reacting yeah no it's definitely uh we're definitely leaking off it a little bit but uh i mean expected a good number i mean that that the first reaction is has been to sell here and uh, that's just a one minute chart so we got a lot you know still major green on the session but uh they're peppering bids as we speak uh if you're looking at, at the top of yesterday's range you're right here right now 26.75 looks like we're gonna slice through that like hot butter all right looks like uh year over year april at 51.22 percent versus a 29.01 percent prior there so uh, a little bit better reading there. So let's see what else we get here. Export prices coming in here. Now, U.S. export prices at 0.8 versus a 0.6%. So a little bit better beat there on export. I'll How about uh, you want to do Airbnb? We got Marcus coming on in two minutes. Why don't you want to do a ABNB? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Let's go ahead and let's get into Airbnb here. I got the earnings pulled up here. So one of the things is with Airbnb, I, I'm pretty sure everyone's watching, is how they're going to react after the pandemic. We all know how they changed up before the pandemic, but the company posted revenues of eight hundred and eighty-six point nine million, which is ahead of the seven hundred and fourteen million analysts expected. However, the company's net loss tripled due to debt repayments and restructuring costs. Um, so, what are you seeing on that chart? It's not not looking the best to me. Man, this say I mean, Dennis, if you look at some of these IPOs, I mean, there's there all the high growth. It's a capital. yeah. I don't know if yep. she owns Airbnb, but this is a typical high growth. We don't make any money. We're not going to make any money for a long time. And the market doesn't want to own these things. I love the Airbnb company. The valuation gotcha. was ridiculous the whole time. I've never put in a long-term portfolio because it's just crazy. It was worth more than like any hotel in the entire industry. A couple hotels. I, I think combined. <laughs> right. So, I mean, yeah, I believe in Airbnb. I don't think it's going away. I think it is disruptive technology. I do believe that. The valuation was just ridiculous. So it's coming in. Would I buy Airbnb at 50 bucks? Yep. Would I buy it at 70 bucks? Maybe. Would I buy it at 100 bucks? Probably not. So, I mean, it's all a matter of just crunching the numbers and figuring out what they can eventually make. But right now, this market wants to be paid now. And if it's not getting paid now, it's not interested in owning the stock. 
Uh, a lot of price discovery here between 134 and 136. That's been since uh, you woke up at uh, 4 a.m. to start trading. Uh, the low from yesterday, uh, 31.28. So there's a target on the downside. And, I mean, here's the all-time low, which was made off the IPO. That's 21.50. So, I'm not, you know, I kind of the way it's feeling right now, you're having buyers now. So if you do breach that uh the low from yesterday, I don't think you're gonna whoosh right down to that old time low at 21.53. On a rebound, it looks like you know there's a seller here in the pre-market, minor seller or since 4 a.m. at 137 even. Yeah, I think the story here is going to be watching how the consumer really reacts after the vaccine. You know, for a while there in the pandemic, it seemed like Airbnb took priority over all the hotels. And so now the question is, do we get a run back to, let's say, uh, big hotel chains like Hilton, Marriott, or do people still choose Airbnb over, let's say, a, a chain like Hilton or Marriott? I think that's one thing to consider here. Still leaking, folks. Uh, we cut through yesterday. Yeah, that's price. why I'm, I yeah. can tell I'm very distracted here. Yeah, um, go ahead. Let's bring Marcus on. I, I've got. All right. It, it yeah, looks like looks with... like Marcus is a little late. I'm gonna go get him right quick. See see what's taking him a little bit long to get in here. But what we can talk about until then, let's talk a little bit uh, about DoorDash's earnings. DoorDash okay, earnings. Go. Uh, the shares of the food delivery company jumped more than eight percent here. Um, so on the back of the company's first quarter earnings, DoorDash reported a future 21 uh, revenue growth of 197% year over year to $1.77 billion, beating the analyst's consessment of $993.32 million. And DoorDash increased the number of partner merchants supported across multiple categories, generated more earnings for more dashers than any previous quarter, and served more consumers than it ever had. Total earnings actually uh, total orders actually rose 219% year over year to 329 million. So the orders from non-restaurants here and DoorDash definitely uh, looking good there in their earnings compared to, let's say, uh, we were looking at like maybe Grubhub and, and other ones wow, struggling. But look at, well, there's Dash, a couple, not a bad, yeah, not a bad couple chart there. things here, folks. Can you, can you put the chart up right quick? Oh, Joe, yeah, I, I did. I thought you were going to Marcus. Uh, yeah. Don't, don't get FUBO'd on this. OK, uh, we've seen this scenario a lot of times uh, in these growth stocks and you're getting a nice pop off the number. Uh, the first thing I'll mention and uh, let's see, uh, yesterday's high was oh, we're above that uh, 118.72. So that's the top of the range. This is a streak. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Lower highs, lower lows, and I'm not sure about the closes. That's a nasty string, folks. Uh, you got to take out this pre market high. This is imperative that you take out 128.80. You're almost five bucks away from there. You look like sellers are ganging up at 126 right now. So you got to get that momentum. You got to get it to the pre market high. If not, you're going to get a fade, and it turned into a two day fade. Uh, with Fubo, where it's now actually, I think, lower it was before the earnings. So if you're looking at support here, uh, the top of yesterday's range, 118.72, maybe sneak out there at 119 if it if it whooshes down there. The fact that you did get away from the low parallels, 110, 110, 15, 112, 105. Now people are like, oh, I should have covered my short these last 11 days. And now I got to, you know, now people are stuck a little bit. So backing and filling on this one, uh, I don't think you'll get to the top of yesterday's range. But that's my setup for DoorDash. And also, I mean, if you're talking about a reopening of the economy and you're talking about people going to Disney World, who's going to get stuff delivered from DoorDash? Right? And plus, I mean, who wants a guy like sticking their fingers in your French fries, you know, on the way to your house and getting cold? And what's what do they charge for that, too, Mitch? Do you know? Oh, it's a pretty hefty premium. The, really? the biggest thing is that I've seen with these companies is that they where they really hurt is they hurt the restaurants. I, I, I almost don't understand why the restaurants kind of agree to this. The biggest reason they agree to it is just because there's so many orders that come through it. 
but it, they, they also take a, a cut, a pretty hefty cut also from the, the businesses themselves. The businesses have to pay to be on right. here and at different rates. And, and, and they also give them different rates based on the business that they feel they're going to bring to DoorDash here. So I think that's other other thing to pay attention to. I think in the long run, I, I think, you know, with uh, kind of smaller vehicles coming out, I think you know, who, who knows, maybe it comes back to where restaurants actually have uh, their own delivery uh, kind yeah, of cars. I mean, their own- it's, I, I, I'm sure each one has to do like the volume, right? Like if, mm-hmm. if I wasn't going to, I don't even know where I would order from, but anyways, you know, <laughs> I mean, and also these places with curbside. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, the, a lot of these places are still doing curbside. So, I mean, if you, I mean, if you don't want to yeah, get let's... off your butt and go to, you know, and you're ordering food and you don't want to go pick it up and you want to pay the extra premium. I don't know. This thing had its IPO. And it's been straight down and, you know, it was a, you know, came out kind of late during the pandemic. I don't know. I, uh, I, good we hated it right from the beginning. Hard I to still be bullish. hate DoorDash. I think that the valuation is stupid. I think that there's so much competition coming for this company. <laughs> Food delivery. They did not reinvent the wheel. This is not Airbnb, folks. I'm people that have made that comparison before. Oh yeah, this is you know the delivery service you know where everybody's going to be using it. There's a million of these services going to be coming at you. So and and and, and restaurants going to be doing it themselves as well. More delivery. So I think that you know just from a valuation perspective, great company valuation is insane. I think hard to buy. Will, I think we're eventually going to look at DoorDash under fifty dollars a share. That's my prediction. So within a year. I'll say a year on my price target. If I was, you know, an, an analyst here putting price targets, just my opinion, I'd put my price target at DoorDash with a sell at 50. That's what I would do on DoorDash. That's my opinion on it. <laughs> I might be wrong. That's not my, I'm not an analyst. I'm not Michael Pactor, but I think just from logically speaking, the valuation is insane. I see competition coming for them all over the place. Don't like it at all. Well, 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 guys, uh, I got a, a little bit of bad news. It looks like Marcus had something come up, so he's not going to be joining us. But oh. you got Money Mitch. Money Mitch. I can start talking about some stocks that I'm watching. Maybe we what can do, do some of that. All right, guys. So uh, a couple of stocks that I've been looking at. And today I'm, I'm going to bring up a couple of them. Today for the reopening, of course, I'll bring up my Frontier right now because it did a big pullback. ULCC. Um, we can look at that one. I, I, I like the, I like that chart overall. Um, let's see. I think Joel got it up. If not, I can pull it up right here. All right. So this is ULCC, guys. Uh, this is Frontier Holdings here. And biggest thing I see is on this daily chart, you know, we've had multiple attempts to come through this kind of 2150, but it hasn't gotten strong there today. That's what I'm looking for. If we can come up towards that level and actually get strong and, and kind of do a little bit of breakout, this is a, a little bit of a value play. So value has been coming a little bit out of favor, but it has that reopening play with it. Um, I think with this uh, CDC guidelines, you might see an increase in, in kind of airline uh, purchases and the consumer thinking, all right, well, if I don't got to wear a mask, I'm vaccinated. I can start going and, and buying some airlines. So w- what do you think about this one, Dennis? Uh, as long as it holds the low of, you know, when it came out here, 1826, that's what it needs to hold because I always say stocks make new lows. You got to go. I like the reopening place. I like the pullback. I mean, we're rallying this morning. All, all airlines are trading a little bit higher this morning. If you're just looking and this one's really getting a lift. Was there a specific news on this one? Cause it's up, it's up like 4% here this morning, which is a big pop and it's bit up here too. Yeah, anyway, I'd wait for a pullback. I'm not buying a stock on a day it's up four percent, but you get this down in the 19s or 20s. It did. It had earnings. Um, it had earnings last night. So that's that's why that's why we, we've got some movement here. So last 86 cents versus the 12 cents and 270 million. So the numbers weren't actually very good, but this is a market that we're not concerned about airline earnings. So I don't mind it down here, 18, 19, 1950. I'm not buying it up 50 cents on the day or 70 cents on the day. I wait for a pullback. And it's critical that it holds that low, though. So if I'm going in this, I'm stopping myself out at the low, the all-time low, which is 1826. All right, I had to Joel's handle silent. with some uh, handle some spammers there in the chat. I, I'm so here. We handled that at least. Um, all right, so let's 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 get into another earnings play that it is earnings that came out, and another stock that I kind of like is Pub M. 
Uh, their earnings recently just came out. So uh, if you want, you could pull that chart up, Joe, and I, I'll put your charts back. Okay. You, yeah. you like this one. You like this one for a while there, Mitch. Mm -hmm. So it's pulled back substantially here. This is obviously Ooh. one of those growth names that are big time out of favor. Um, is there... You know, like tell us a story, but I don't know that the, the fun. I got you. I got all. you guys. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll read you the earnings. Their first quarter highlights just came out, guys. So this was yesterday. Revenue is in the first quarter of 2021 was four. 43.6 million, an increase of 54% over 28.3 million in the same period of 2020. Now, one of the things that you can uh, focus on is here is revenue from the fast growing advertisement formats, mobile and omni channel video, which include over the over the top and CTV grew 83% year over year and represented 63% of the total revenue in Q1 and 2021. Uh, their guidance update for the second quarter of 2021 we expect the revenue to be in the range of 45 million to 46 million, representing a growth of 70 to 75 percent over quarter two in 2020. So definitely their outlook is starting to get a little better. Now, one of the things that I've said and I've talked about this is programmatic advertisement is just the new move, guys. It's a digital way to really start targeting the consumer and really focusing on the ads. As we saw from, let's say, Google and Facebook's earnings, they talked a lot about how their advertisement business has been doing really great. So that's why another reason why I've been paying attention to some of these plays. I mean, Pub, Pub, uh, Pubmatic trades also with uh, Trade Desk and you could also look at MGI, uh, MGNI. That's another stock that trades with it, and it's and it's one that I definitely am going to be looking forward uh, to when this one gets a, a bounce off that support. That's man, I tell you, you need to see some love. Yeah, boy, these charts are steadily. I mean, how many stocks do you see that look like this? Everything that doesn't make money. <laughs> They're all just, and, and maybe it's going to be the baby with the bathwater. What Mitch is trying to point out is some stocks that he thinks eventually will lead us, you know, yeah. out, of, out of this. But right now, if your company is not making any money, if it's pre-revenue, it is hated. PUBM, obviously, same story here. Company that is not currently making money. They want people who make money now. I guess you know, made nine cents, but you know, nine eight. You can just see what we're talking about. They're not making much money. So high valuation names are hated. It's getting a nice bounce. It's probably going to get sold here again. Is there a point in time where I'd buy this? I think we need to see some type of turnaround in these growth names. We need to see this, you know, growth start to get some love. Every time it gets a little bit of love, two days later, it's sold off again. So it's guilty, until, bucks. guilty until proven innocent. Yeah, keep me. an eye, folks. 38 bucks. We're hanging up here at 37.60. Can't make it any simpler than this. This was yesterday's high, 38.17. You got there in the, the pre-market, so maybe you got some room up to 39.42 if they want to keep jamming it. But first things first, let's take out the pre-market high. Coincides with actually with Wednesday's close also was right there. That's where you get the follow through. If not, you're just going to get the fade. And then, you know, the same thing is, uh, you know, maybe Airbnb or this other stock. Maybe, oh, I, maybe I missed the double bottom yesterday at 34. So maybe they'll stake some bids up ahead of it. But man, it's so tough. Mm. We've seen these charts where these things pop. And I'll just say, you know, don't get FUBOed, you know, chasing this thing. So that's uh that's a look at Pub M and that advertising revenue. I mean, Google's obviously got to figure out, and Facebook's not being too bad. Twitter has no idea. So I don't know. You can put faith behind this Pub M. Maybe they have a little different method, but man, seems like uh the big boys got this, uh, the ad market corner. All right. All right, guys, let's get into a popular one. I'm seeing about 329 likes. Let's see if we can get up there towards 800 likes today, guys. I want to give you guys a story stock at the end of the show. If we get towards those like, if not, I'll just keep it to myself today, huh. but <laughs> we'll, we'll definitely take a look at that. If we get towards that 800 likes, but up next, let's talk Fisker Fisker. Everyone wanted to talk about it. Who's getting frisky with the Fisker, right? Shares rallying up about 13% on the 30,000. An EV partnership with Foxconn. What happened was this was an actual one that was announced a little bit earlier, but completed now, and a joint venture called Project Pair. This will bring an electric vehicle to market for under $30,000 to markets, including North America, Europe, China, and India. One of the things that I, I think that's important is that Fisker highlighted that the chip shortage in the, automo uh, in the automotive industry is seeing a key positive of the venture from Foxconn. And Fisker claims that it won't ever run out of chips. 
Yeah, because they just don't make that hated. many cars. You know? they, will, they will. Yeah, but they will eventually. But the stock is hated. I do believe we're eventually going to see Fisker um, make cars. I think this is real. I think they'll eventually have revenue. I think they'll eventually even have profits. But it's a long ways down the road. The stock is hated. I own half my original position. We know um, I've been holding on to because I want to hold some growth names. It's been a terrible name. I rebought my whole position that I sold up at 24. I rebought the whole thing at 15. I sold half of it at 14 and a half because I didn't like it breaking down. I wish I would have sold the whole thing. 10 bucks, you know, but then these are these are post deals. So this $10 really doesn't apply or anything exactly. anymore. I think you're probably going to get met with sellers here. Sorry, talking against my book here on Fisker. Um, I'm, I've got the small piece I'm probably holding on to because I need to have some growth still in my portfolio. Oh, and I like this name, awesome. but... This isn't this isn't a money. This is this is hated right now. So, I, I wouldn't buy it up fifteen percent. I would not. Uh, real quick, then we'll bring Jason on. Uh, throw out that high. Throw out the low. Eleven sixty is your focus here, folks. Two daily highs right here at eleven sixty. Trying to be bid in that area. That's what you got to get up. Hold rally continue and FSR. All right, all right. Looks like we got the one and only the Raz attack here. Nice Raz alert. Raz alert. What up? I'm here. What up? What up? What up? Dennis, I don't hate to I hate to disagree on soft, you know, Fisker and even the one uh, Mitchell um that you like in Cleveland. What's the one that I missed the whole rally on? Oh, uh, HOFV, HOFV, Hall of Famer. No, no. No, it's an electric thing. We're talking Fisker. Oh, we're talking electric, electric. Oh, you're workhorse. talking workhorse. WKS. Workhorse. Mitchell brought that to me at 3. I never did it. So yeah. I missed out. Yeah, Don't uh, worry, it might get the three again for you. They're going to get a second <laughs> shot, I think, Ross. <laughs> and, and, and I don't like Fisker, and I haven't liked it ever because – so I'm biased and it's not fair, but I haven't liked it ever because I, I watched an interview with Elon Musk three years ago where he, like, ripped it. And since that time, I have a bad connotation for, like, you know, there's certain words or company names. Uh, Fisker is one of them. That yeah, I, well, I, it's direct competition to Tesla, so obviously yeah. this probably isn't going to be a fan, so – you're a Tesla man, so that's okay. You don't have to like any of the other EV plays. What do you like right now, Mr. Rasnick? Great question, Dennis. I thought you would never ask. So, <laughs> um, so there are some stocks that have been beaten down. And, oh, yeah. And some stocks. Yeah, exactly. And so um, I used to be on margin, but when the market goes up, I, I, you know, I sell a little bit. When the market starts to down, I start selling a lot. So I'm... I'm not a margin at all. Actually, I'm in the most cash I've ever had. Good. Um, and so that's one positive thing of all this. Um, Voyager at 1642 could eventually see some bids, um, but I'm, I'm not trading it anymore. I, I feel like I'm too close to the situation. I don't have any like, you know, intelligence on it. I just, I just know that count openings are strong. Like they, they announced April. Um, but listen, crypto is, this whole thing with Elon Musk thing, it's a real thing, this whole Bitcoin thing and the energy, and they're going to try to fix it. And supposedly, as Dennis said, that um, Pop, Pop said 75% is done the right way. But let's go to stuff that I like, I'm thinking of picking up more shares of potentially. Yeah. So Caesars CZR, mm -hmm. I'm still, I own some, so I'm talking my book. I'm down 1.14% of my position. I still think Caesars is going to have room to run. Um, Reopening trade. Yep, uh, and and I and I have people there. W Y N N, another reopening trade. Yeah. Um, but the, what could hold those down? You know, the economy. The right, the economy. Stupid. It's it's that simple. Um, another one that nice I, level one twenty on on win. That seems to be holding that well. If I was in that, that's where I'd stop myself. Oh, look at all one twenty. Beautiful there. level though. Wow. So Raz giving you out a decent level. I'd say it's got to hold the one twenty though. If it starts to break down, I'd stop myself out. Okay, and then one that I'm getting killed on, and I've said it on the show, so I want to own it. Like you know, a Raz could have good picks. I said myself in the third person, but I can have bad picks. My pick right here is the one that I'm getting killed. On. You might want to put it on the screen. Is, sure. Is six S I X on the show? I said three weeks ago. I think. Come on, by by August six will be sixty six and sixty. So, okay. um, so I I still own it. I trimmed the position, so now I have a smaller position. And my and my strategy here is I need to look at the earnings date. I need to go to Benzinga Project the earnings date, but I think it could hit thirty nine thirty eight. 
and then I'm going to triple up. Like I'm going to go hardcore because I mean, I, I, it's crazy. I mean, I have kids, they're going to the parks. They're going to the parks. These stocks are selling off. It's just like when I, in my opinion, Dennis and Joel and Mitch, in my opinion is when I was buying Polaris and um, Yeti and all those things during, you know, Corona, yeah. people weren't buying them. And I, and I, I look like I went out last night. I, I, that's not nice, Bill Big D. What? I, oh, <laughs> there, that's a tough chat. There's a few rough people in there today. What am I doing? Ninety percent of the chat's awesome. Ten percent is giving out hate, no matter what today. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm not. Like we have big... some hackers in here too. I don't know if they're from that. Colo- they got bored with the colonial oh. thing, and oh uh, uh, yeah, there's been some spam here. going on today. And some so, people have hacked and in here and spam I, us. I still own Leslie Pool Surprise. We're up fifteen yeah. percent. Um, Gan is something I sold off a bunch. And I may buy GAN again. G A N. It's at fourteen ninety six. I wanted to wow. see what do, but yeah, yeah. I so so I made a bunch of money on this one. This is one that I like got out in the thirties. I told my family, but I still own two. I I had like two thousand shares. I have two hundred shares now, just to put it in perspective. It's small, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we both did. We both cashed in on that one, Jason. It was a good yeah. One. But I'm, so Mitchell, I'm thinking of potentially buying some more um at the sport i wanted to get to the 13 level because my my cost basis on the 200 is 28 so i'm thinking of buying so that's another one dennis if the market sells a little bit i'm buying some today i think it's back for a trade i think there's a lot of those dennis i think we're gonna look back in six months and say you know would have could have a, a little bit i mean yes i do think there's headwinds in the economy i do think infl- inflation i mean i don't want to get into politics because that's just not what I want to do. But I do think the government is doing some things that just, I, you know, I'm a big wing stop investor, as you know. Maybe yeah. I went to four wing stops last night. Four. <laughs> no wonder you're feeling rough. <laughs> Where's there four around here? I, I, I talked I talk to management. There's, I mean, I can tell you the cities, but I don't think the show will be interested there. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I can tell you where they are, the Southfield. There's Detroit. Okay. There's Centerline. I got four. I went to four. Okay. okay. <laughs> I I wanted to talk. I, I wanted to talk to the workers, and um, you know, one of the places only had, basically in the last two months, they've had so many people quit at each door because they just rather take unemployment. So That's the problem. So, Interesting. But here's the here's the, here's the bigger problem. Here is the bigger problem. Ready for this one? This is one that's a little more surprising to me. So not like it's hard to go hire people. This lady was the only one with the store yesterday. They had to turn off all their DoorDash orders. So the district manager, so I ordered DoorDash Wingstop. Yesterday I ordered a $160 order from DoorDash. I go through this, the payment page. It said, sorry, you can only pick up only. So I almost threw the DoorDash app out. I was so mad. Why did it make me do all the picking of everything? And then tells me, Pick up only. They should do that ahead of time. They should warn me. Okay, DoorDash, if you're listening again, fix that. Because I spent I spent 40 minutes, five, four minutes doing the order. Four minutes is a long time for me. I talk fast. See? <laughs> and I, I, guys, I was so mad. I was so mad. But, you know, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go pick it up. And it started my whole thing with the DoorDash interviews. So I went to door. I mean, not DoorDash, Wingstop. She's the only one there. The last two people to do the afternoon sh- shift quit in the last two weeks because they'd rather sit on the couch and get – um, 18 an hour. She said the reason she goes to work is because when she was on unemployment, she just like sat there on the couch and she was going crazy. She needs to get out of the house. So this is not good for my wing stop thesis because they're turning down sales. That's like, horrible. A, yeah. A girl came in to buy some wings and the lady's like, I can't do it. You just got to go online and do it. I can't do it. So what are they going to do? And what I don't understand, Dennis, Joel and Mitchell, this is what I don't understand. There's a lot of powerful executives, okay? A lot of powerful executives, McDonald's executives, uh, you know, whoever. They have access to government. They have lobbyists. How are they not going crazy in Biden's ear and saying, we can't hire right now? We can't hire unless we pay $22 an hour. We pay $22 an hour, we're going can't out. can't make any money. Yeah, and so I don't know what is going on, who's talking to who. I have a media pass for the White House. I may have to go there and ask that question. I don't know if someone will answer my question, but I need to know what they're going to do. The argument to be said the other way, though, is this. This is the argument so that I think about what they could say. The answer they could say is wages have been depressed. They should go up $10 an hour, and that's what's 
maybe the argument. Yeah, so. I, I think this is this has come from, and I've said it before, the unrealistic expectation that everybody should be paid at fifteen dollars an hour. That yeah. has already set in, in 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 everybody's mind. And so, if you're in a state that has, let's say, eight dollars an hour, <laughs> you're gonna stay on unemployment because there's you're just no more point. Money. There's yeah, no you're point. More I mean. Money. Yep, I'm about Kevin O'Leary made this a point on uh, CNBC about two hours ago this morning. Kevin O'Leary was on, and it was a great point. He's just saying that the, the, we're competing with the government. I mean, if the government's going to you know keep sending checks, then what is the incentive to go work for eight or ten bucks an hour? So you know you may have to raise up that minimum wage. But again, if we just keep sending the stimulus checks and we keep printing money here, there's no point to going out and getting a job. So what, you're right; these companies need workers. What's the point of our dollar? I mean, we're just giving money. Dennis, where Joel and I live, our county is like eight, 100 million in surplus. They're about to get a $470 million check from the government. They don't know what to do with it. They can't lower taxes. They literally don't know what to do with it. It doesn't make any sense. I don't know why. It gets me so crazy. The government needs to stop printing some money here now. I mean, this is this is the root of all evil here. I mean, this is why inflation is happening. This is why these companies can't hire. I mean, we need to slow down the stimulus now. I need to, you know, we need to slow down the printing press. Uh, but they won't because they're concerned about the ramifications of everything imploding. So I just uh, wish there was someone in office. I don't mean Trump, Biden. I don't want to get into that. Just someone that saw both sides and found the happy medium. You know, like just found the happy and did not not take and take the politics out of it. I know that euphoric dream will never happen, but it's so frustrating what's going on. It really is, Dennis. It, it needs to be a multiple. It cannot be a standard number. And I think that's the biggest thing. It needs to take into account state by state wages right now and how much those states should go up versus, let's say, a state like Colorado or a state like California or New York, where the wages need to be higher than even 15. And so it cannot be this just one standard $15 an hour for the whole nation. I mean, that just isn't going to work. State by state economies are way different. There's a reason why I live in Colorado, guys. I mean, at the end of the day, you can go make about $12 an hour at a McDonald's here. You can't do that in Florida. It's $8.65, the minimum wage in Florida. It's $8. I mean, there is some areas that the minimum wage needs to be higher. Absolutely. So yeah. eight bucks. I don't know how that's 16,000 bucks a year. Uh, in, in an inflationary environment, this is like way, way, way below poverty. So there's an argument in some of these states. Like, I, I don't know if it's got to be mandated across, but $8 an hour. I hear I, you. I, I, I don't think I'd want to go out and get a job either at $8 an hour. But Dennis, it's a free market. People can find jobs for more. Who's taking the 865 job? I mean, right? Uh, some people are, though. Some people are. The, the, the waiters, are, it's $5.65 plus tips, I think, in Florida. It's crazy, man. It's crazy to think about working for five dollars and sixty-five cents an hour plus tips. I mean, you're, you got to hope your tips are pretty good. You know, I, some people I, got it really tough. I hear. So, Dennis, what are you doing in this market? I'm in cash. I'm sitting in a lot of cash. I'm trading. I love the trading aspect of it. The rips and the dips, still buying dips and selling rips in the trading aspect. But on the long-term investing, uh, we had this conversation about a week and a half ago. I was like, I don't like anything. Somebody answered me the question, "Where are you putting your excess cash right now?" I was like, "I'm leaving it in cash." Because one, everything is overvalued, every single asset. I'm like, I invest in real estate. I'm like, I tried to buy a place just uh, a month ago, another waterfront property. And it's listed at 850,000. It goes at 1.1 million. You know, like it's going way over. There's no deals in real estate. There's no deals. The crypto's inflated. Collectibles are inflated. Stocks are inflated. There's been, you know, and obviously we have inflation. So that's hitting your cash too. There's no real nice place for money right now. Um, I think that's why you know, the market has started to roll over to a certain extent because this commodity bubble we've got, I mean, everything is in a bubble right now, except maybe the Kathy Wood stocks, which have been really head hard, but they were already in a bubble and they're just correcting some of that bubble. So it's a tough investing environment here right now. Agreed, agreed. But did you did you follow my lead on my USDC? <laughs> I think we go on and doing that 6%. Over what do you do? You open a Coinbase account? And then I'll, you I'll, okay, okay. I mean, I'll show my account and I'll show you my nine percent. Um, don't get mad. I'm not showing Voyager, but I'll show you uh, BlockFi. No, let me send you the link so we get our ten dollar referral fee. 
Um, <laughs> so we need smart that. man. We need to get Benzinga's revenue up this month. Um, okay, so let me show if I can pull it up. So this so you guys can see what it looks like. Okay. All right. Well, Jason's pulling that up. I just want to show you the interest rate, not the assets in there, not that. I just want to show you what the, like it looks like. I don't know if I can do it properly, Dennis, but I'm yeah. getting nine percent on my cash. Go yeah, ahead and, and pull that up, Jason. Before we get to that, I want to talk about definitely, definitely, guys, get ready. We're about to get into the global small cap conference. This is bridges to cap between small cap companies, investors, and traders. So if you guys want some education, you guys want some great interviews. We had some great companies yesterday, like MindMed today. RC Moto, uh, Vuzi is going to be on there. And also Arcomodo, you got BTCS. Arcomodo. Arkimoto, Arkimoto, FUV, FUV. If you like them small vehicles and you're looking for the future, that just might be it. So definitely stay tuned. It's going to come right into it right after this stream. You don't got to go anywhere. We can get right into it. I'm also going to put a link in the chat here that you guys can just go over to. Okay. It does. It's not really showing me, but basically through Voyager, you get 9%. There's not really a, a page of show. It just shows my assets and what interest is I So I just open up a Voyager account, put a deposit there, and I get 9%. Is that kind of how it works? Yeah, I'll send you a link, of course, to your email shortly. Okay. Um, but yeah, yeah. I mean, put in $10,000 so you just like see how it goes and, you know, set 9%, it. 9%, 9%. 9%. That's what, I, that's what I've been doing. Dennis, I, better than you're getting in anywhere right now, I'll tell you. That's pretty solid. <laughs> that's it's like nine times better. <laughs> I know. I know. I believe you. I know. Yeah. So real quick on what um, Mitchell has alluded to, the small cap event, absolutely amazing, guys. The, he was mentioning a mind med. It went up like 4%. You're basically getting access. And I'm not saying go trade all the stocks or anything like that, but I am saying this. Dennis, Dennis told a story a couple days ago that I really liked. The story that he told was he um, he was uh, in uh, where was he? I forget where he was, but the moral of the story was he heard uh, Elon Musk say something about Dogecoin, and he literally jumped and shorted Mara or tried to Mara and Riot. And why that's interesting to me is what you could do it. Bitcoin. What? That was the the negative comment. When he did the negative Bitcoin, Bitcoin. Uh, a few okay, days ago. Okay, thank, right, thank yeah. you. So Dennis took action on it, and what I'm saying to you is a small cap event. I'm not I'm not saying go trade everything, but watch the patterns. Dennis knows the patterns. That, I mean, Dennis, you know, can make money because he knows patterns. So you can watch a small cap event today, and you see companies present. Look at their stocks do. Look at the volume. Learn from it. Use it in the future. So the event we put on for two days is typically an institutional only event. It's typically available to people at Canaccord, at a bank. We bring it to the public. And take advantage of that. Take advantage of, um, of us bringing th this event to the public. You usually can't get access to this. I'm not saying go trade all of them, go get too excited, but learn about companies. Why let the institution front run you? That's we, Benzinga is about democratizing information. Sometimes we do a good job, sometimes we do a bad job. Dennis sent feedback about something we have with Canadian tickers. He's right on. It needs to be fixed. And um, and like that's where we're doing a bad job. And so sometimes we're trying to democratize information. Why give institutional information available to, to just institutions? So the only way you can make these shows available to the public is if you come and watch. So we have two channels, I think. Please today tune in, like, comment. We really appreciate it if you would. Yeah, definitely, guys. You know, one of the uh, interviews that I watched yesterday was with MindMed, and I got some great information. One of the things that JR said was, and, and, this, and a lot of people probably haven't heard this before, is that he said Mr. Wonderful was really the one that led him to understanding that, hey, I needed to get to NASDAQ so I could be there for the institutional investors as they're probably going to come in the space and take up the top three players. So I thought that that comment alone was, was more than worth watching the small cap events so definitely guys stay tuned we're gonna go right into it definitely i'm seeing a, a lot of love out there a lot of people enjoyed yesterday so let's go ahead let's get right on into really? the small cap event we're already done we're, we're wrapping up we're wrapping right. up they already yeah, started at nine small so cap we, event we, going. we need to get it going we need to get it going okay as always email power hour benzinga.com and, and tell each you want our news send us a screenshot we'll send you swag thank you 
And send of me course, that of link course. too. That uh, on the we board. all want the nine percent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Joel's like nine percent. I take the chat. Wondering I'm where's the, the link? Where's right the now. link? Where's the link? It's oh, SIJC. No, I got Jason it right here. Insured. Yeah, SIJC. Jason. Jason <laughs> the Fleur deal is probably done. People are asking why it's Fleur halted. I haven't looked, but I'm just. I know it's supposed to close. They probably closed the deal, so um, we know uh, Fleur is getting taken over. So if you ask about FLIR, why it's halted, I would assume, I haven't seen a headline yet, but I would assume that the deal is probably closed. All right, I, get, all right. I, I, I gave the link. I gave the link. If you open an account, I think Benzin gets like $10. We'll put it back to the show, and we'll, we'll get um, Joel, um, I don't know, a new sign. All right, Joel, are you going to be doing that to close a little bit later on, on, on pre-market prep? Uh, yep, yep. I'll, I'll throw the link out later on. There you go, guys. Go blue. Definitely stick with them. Stick with them. Go blue. Go blue. All right. Have a great conference, guys. All right. Wrapping up here, guys. We're going to bring you up to the Benzinga Global Small Cap Conference. Stick around, guys. Even if you're a trader, maybe just put it in your ear. Bring the volume down and and definitely check it out, guys. Let's go ahead and let's get right to it. Don't leave. Don't leave. Don't leave. Hit the like. Hit the like. Hit the subscribe. See you there.